JRPGs? What about them? That's a typical response to anything regarding the genre, but luckily, Nino Kuni wrapped the white which restores our enthusiasm in a dying breed of gaming. The independent level 5 studio plays a renegade role within game development, as the JRPG genre has commonly suffered in quality due to the westernization of titles. In an attempt to appeal to a wider, mainstream audience, this has in fact pushed fans away and caused not only sales, but interest to dwindle. Nino Kuni doesn't make a dramatic stride to change this trend, however it does it effortlessly. Many should be able to identify Nino Kuni with more familiar RPG franchises such as Pokemon. Admittedly, there are a ton of similarities. Nino Kuni's story revolves around a young boy named Oliver, or the pure-hearted one, who is destined to save the parallel universe he lives in. Prior to his wizardry, Oliver had no knowledge of the links between his world and the fairies, and how any given soulmates are the same person yet different amongst these worlds. <laughs> Oliver won't be able to save the world on his own, so he's accompanied by Mr. Drippy, a clever tongued fairy and some other useful acquaintances. Initially, Oliver had no intentions of helping to save the fairy world. He then came around after discovering that the fate of his deceased mom was linked to a sage named Alicia, and he still may be able to save her. Alicia was imprisoned by Shadar, an evil dark djinn who serves the white witch herself. Shadar is determined to crush the pure heart of one on behalf of the white witch. To avert this world's doom. You'll spend a lot of your time traversing the desert, forests, and oceans, but not before encountering some familiars to babble. What are familiars? They're monsters from the fairy world who oppose you and fight by your side. No Pokeball required. The more you battle, the more powerful you and your familiars become. You'll also learn a couple new tricks, because calling them super attacks would be too mainstream. During Oliver's journey, he'll acquire some spells that are not only useful to battle, but conquering environments and egging pedestrians. Train well. And don't forget to visit the shops for new gear for you and your familiars. You'll need these and provisions to keep your team healthy on the go. Ice coffee, cheeseburger, and poison be gone? Wait, poison be gone? Yes, because calling it an antidote would be too mainstream. The cauldron is your pot of spell and ingredient concoctions that can spawn you new weapons and provisions. Just follow the recipes presented by the genie. Since I've yet to mention this, I'll say it now. Nino Kuni is a beautiful game. A large part of the game cutscenes are rendered in engine with smaller portions featuring a beautiful series worthy anime film that I can't get enough of. Nino Kuni makes use of the population with quests that will earn you merit stamps for helping those individuals. While walking around, you'll be able to borrow pieces of missing heart where there is an abundance of it. Heart pieces are a set of emotions linked to making oneself whole. You'll need these to complete main and side quests. I'll come to your world. I'll come with you and save my mom. Shadar is no light adversary and you'll oppose other powerful creatures before you encounter this dark djinn. Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch is a gratifying experience. Level 5's attention to detail should be enjoyed by traditionalists who have given up on the genre. Nino Kuni sets a benchmark for presentation and story development amongst most games available today. Hopefully the future of JRPGs take note of Nino Kuni's self-proclaimed achievement, because returning to your roots is something that should never be, you know, too mainstream. I, uh... Just wanted to look at what weapons. Dual Pixels awards Nino Kuni Raph the White Witch a 9 out of 10. Another. Thanks for watching and subscribe or feel a Raph the White Witch.